So once again, so very good morning to all. So welcome back to the third session of the P block elements two. Uh, in this, we are going to completely look into the phosphorus, its allotropes, and the components of the phosphorus, <coughs> its physical properties and chemical properties. All those things we are going to look into. See, the most common allotropes of the phosphorus could be white, red, and black phosphorus. The freshly prepared phosphorus is colorless, so we call it as a white in color. Uh, this white phosphorus will be converted into pale yellow phosphorus when it is exposed to the atmosphere. Uh, the formation of the pale yellow phosphorus is because of the formation of the red layer over the first layer of this white phosphorus. Which means, since it appears, since uh, the formation of the red layer of the phosphorus uh, between the white phosphorus, it appears to be the pale yellow color or just the yellow color phosphorus. This yellow color phosphorus you have to change here, it is non poisonous. Whereas, if you look into the uh, white phosphorus, it is poisonous there. Okay. So, white phosphorus is poisonous, yellow phosphorus is not poisonous, you need to change it over here. And the smell of this yellow phosphorus is garlic smell and this phosphorus has an ability to glow in dark due to the character called phosphorescence, which means it undergoes oxidation. Because it has a tendency to undergo oxidation, it has an ability to glow in dark because of the uh, reaction called as oxidation, the whole process is called as phosphorescence. And the ignition temperature is very low, which means it ignites at very low temperature and uh, it undergoes spontaneous combustion here, so that in the room temperature itself to give phosphorus pentoxide, P2O5 or P4O10 in any ways. See, so what I am coming to say is ignition, since the ignition temperature is very low, it has an ability to undergo the combustion reaction in air at the room temperature itself to give phosphorus pentoxide, that is it. This white phosphorus is converted into red phosphorus by heating at 420 degrees Celsius in the absence of light and air. So, in the beginning we have seen white phosphorus is converted into pale yellow phosphorus when it is exposed to the atmosphere because of the formation of the red layer of a phosphorus in the white phosphorus it appears as a pale yellow color or yellow color. And this yellow phosphorus is not poisonous, garlic smell whereas white phosphorus is poisonous. I said you have to change it here. Then this yellow phosphorus has an ability to glow in dark due to the oxidation. The whole process is called as phosphorescence over here. And the ignition temperature is very low, which means it undergoes combustion reaction spontaneously in air to give phosphorus pentoxide. This white phosphorus upon <coughs> when it is heated to 420 degrees Celsius in the absence of a light and air, it converts into the red phosphorus. The whole thing completely converts into red phosphorus. This red phosphorus does not ignite at the low temperature, which means uh, its ignited uh, ignition temperature is quite high when compared to this, the ignition temperature of the yellow phosphorus. Then, the red phosphorus can be converted into white phosphorus by maintaining the inert condition, inert atmosphere and you have to heat this red phosphorus, it will definitely convert, it, it will definitely start to convert into vapor, you have to condense the vapor, even if, once you condense the vapor, you will be getting this white phosphorus. Okay, I am coming again. If you have this red phosphorus in the inert atmosphere, you have to boil it, which means you have to heat it and convert it into vapor, and then you have to uh, bring back the vapor by condensing to the white phosphorus. So, this happens here. The next thing is this phosphorus. Phosphorus exists in the form of a layer structure, okay, and it is a good semiconductor, which, which means uh, partially conduct electricity, maybe on the addition of an impurities, uh, the pentavalent impurities, it, it, it has an ability to conduct electricity over here and polymeric structure which means it, it, it forms a long continuous chain there. So, that is why it has a form of, it, 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 it exists in the form of a P4 units. Then those are linked tetrahedrally which means uh, each phosphorus is surrounded by four other phosphorus in such a way it has been linked. Then if you, this phosphorus comes in the family of the nitrogen, if you look in, if you compare the triply bonded species which means the triply bonded nitrogen is more stable than the singly bonded nitrogen. Whereas in phosphorus, the singly bonded phosphorus is more stable than the triply bonded phosphorus. So, vice versa here it goes. So, this is regarding the structure of the phosphorus and the other, other details regarding the phosphorus is, phosphorus atom actually linked to the single bond, linked to each other through the single bond rather than the triple bond. As I said, phosphorus is more stable in the single bonded species rather than the triple bonded species as we have seen, it is a vice versa when, when you are looking into the nitrogen. The rare allotrope of the phosphorus is scarlet and violet phosphorus. So, this is regarding uh, the phosphorus, uh, allotropes of a phosphorus. This is how phosphorus is linked tetrahedral. The structure is, it resembles as a tetrahedral. 
tetrahedrally, each phosphorus will be connected to four other phosphorus in situ. Now, to sum up, allotropes of the phosphorus, most common allotrope is white, red and black. The next one is, white phosphorus is quite poisonous and it's, since it's a white, it obviously has to be colorless and when it is exposed to the atmosphere, it forms a red layer of a phosphorus in between so that it appears in the form of a pale yellow or yellow phosphorus. Yellow phosphorus, it is a not it is not poisonous here. You have to change it here. I am coming here once more. Uh, then it's a, it resembles a garlic smell. It has an ability to glow in dark due to the oxidation. This property is called as phosphorescence. Then the ignition temperature is very, very low, which means it, it undergoes spontaneous combustion in air to give phosphorus pentoxide, which we have seen. And then white phosphorus is converted into red phosphorus by heating at 420 degrees Celsius. In the absence of air and light, we will be getting red phosphorus. Uh, then red phosphorus do not ignite at low temperature because its ignition temperature is so high. Then followed by the red phosphorus is converted into white phosphorus by maintaining an inert atmosphere and heating it and boiling it, the, uh, then converting into the vapor and the vapor has to be condensed further to get the pure phosphorus. So this is what white phosphorus. And the phosphorus if you look into it, it is a layered structure, it is a semiconductor. On adding the impurities, it, is, it, it, it behaves as a conductor. Then secondly, it exists as a polymeric structure. Uh, all the phosphorus are linked to a, four phosphorus are connected to together and forms a long chain unit uh, that, and it is linked tetrahedrally over here. Then phosphorus will be, in, if you look into the stability of the triply bonded nitrogen and the triply bonded phosphorus, triply bonded nitrogen is more stable. If you look into the uh, stability of the singly bonded nitrogen and the singly bonded phosphorus, singly bonded phosphorus is more stable. So as such it is. The rarest species of the phosphorus is scarlet or violet phosphorus and the structure is being listed out. The next one. Properties of the phosphorus. Phosphorus, since it has an ability to undergo combustion reaction in air so easily, so it has an ability to react with air and forms the phosphorus pentoxide here. See, the phosphorus reacts with oxygen to form phosphorus pentoxide. So, I will make this phi here. Okay. Similarly, it has an ability to form a phosphorus trioxide also. Trioxide in the sense is P4 plus O2 gives P2O3 phosphorus trioxide to balance with I'll make it as 2 here, I'll make it as 3 here. So, this, these are all the contents that you will be able to find uh, when it is exposed to the air or oxygen. Then the reaction with the chlorine. Reaction with the chlorine actually includes the yellow phosphorus, if you allow it to react with the chlorine, it reacts violently the at the room temperature itself, which means exothermic reaction takes place there. Then secondly, red phosphorus will react with the chlorine on heating. Whereas see, you have to look into it. Yellow phosphorus will react violently at the room temperature itself. But whereas red phosphorus will not react at the room temperature, but it will react only on heating. <coughs> One more question can be asked. The reaction includes phosphorus, then chlorine to give phosphorus pentachloride PCl5. So, if I make it as 4 here, I have to make this chlorine as 20, so I will make it as 10. Suppose if it forms phosphorus trichloride, P4 plus Cl2 gives PCl3. So, 4 here, uh, 4, 3 is at 6 here. That's all. This is how it forms a phosphorus trichloride and phosphorus pentachloride. So, these are all the properties of this uh, phosphorus. And followed by the reaction with an alkali. The reaction with an alkali includes the yellow phosphorus will react with an alkali uh, in the presence of a water will give sodium hypophosphite. So, phosphorus reacts with sodium hydroxide in the presence of a water to form sodium hypophosphite NaHPO2 phosphite okay, NaHPO2 or PO3. So, you will be getting pH 3. So, phosphine is your byproduct. Okay. Right. So, this is how the reaction goes. And the reaction with the nitric acid includes phosphorus reacts with the nitric acid. Phosphorus reacts with the nitric acid in the presence of an iodine crystal. You will be getting orthophosphoric acid, uh, H3, PO4, nitrogen dioxide, NO2 and water. The stoichiometry you have to balance is 1 is to 20. You have, as we have discussed for uh, uh, the rest of the compounds which we have seen previously, the reaction with the nitric acid as I said. So, here also you have to make sure that uh, it, it, uh, it oxidizes phosphor to phosphoric acid, the same reaction we have seen there. 
So to balance it, nitrogen is 20 here, then I have to make it as 20 here. Phosphorus is 4, I have to make it as 4 here. Oxygen, if you count, then it is for hydrogen, you need to check. 20 here, 12 here, then you make it as 4 equations. The, the stoichiometry of the previous reaction is quite easy, but this you have to ha ha have it in your mind. Next one. The next one is reaction with the metals. See, this phosphorus reacts with the metals to form phosphide actually. See, phosphorus reacts with magnesium to form phosphide Mg3P2. So, make, if I make it as 2, here it is 6. Then similar also calcium, you have to replace this magnesium with the calcium, then here also it is, you have to replace the magnesium with calcium. Sodium, so a phosphorus reacts with the sodium and forms Na3P, sodium phosphide. Then 4 here, so sodium becomes 12, I will make it as 12. So this is how the reaction goes. And the uses of the phosphorus includes, since it has an ability to undergo various exothermic reactions, it is used in the manufacture of the batch boxes firstly. Then, it is used to manufacture certain analogs like phosphor bronze. Along with the bronze, a phosphorus will would have been mixed there. So, this is regarding the uses of the phosphorus. The next one, the structures of the oxo acids of the phosphorus. The structures of the oxo acids of the phosphorus includes their H3PO2. The skeleton is P double bond O, OH. H, H. Then H3PO3 is P double bond O, OH on either both side. So this is H3PO3. Then H3PO4 is H3PO4 is the same skeleton you have to maintain P double bond O, OH, OH, OH. So, this is H3PO4, uh, phosphoric, orthophosphoric acid or phosphoric acid. Then, hypophosphoric acid includes P double bond O, which is H4P2O6, right? So, OH, 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 then H4P2O6. Uh, then again, Okay, so this is H4, uh, sorry, uh, just a small changes here, P2O6, so P double bond O, P double bond O, OH, 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 this is the actual structure of H4P2. Uh, O6. If you count that 6 oxygen, 4 hydrogen will be there. Then H4P2O7 is between the phosphorus you will be able to find an oxygen. So OH, 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 double bond O, double bond. So this is the structure of it. So this is, these are all the regarding structure of the phosphorus, compounds of the phosphorus here, oxacids of the phosphorus and the allotropes of the phosphorus and some reactions involving Phosphorus with uh, acids, etc. Okay. So, these are all the content which we have seen in this video. And followed by this video, uh, you will come into the phosphorus trichloride, phosphorus pentachloride, and the uh, oxides of the phosphorus. All this reaction we will look into it in the upcoming video shortly. So, we will continue the rest in the following session.